Jeff Zorink here, and welcome to Science Faith Connection, a segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today I'm joined by Dr. Fuzz Rana, and we are going to be discussing the difference between animal death and human death. Fuzz, good to have you on the show today. Thanks, Jeff. So, obviously, everybody dies. Humans dies, animals dies. Uh, but why are we talking about animal death and, and human death? Uh, what's, what's the significance of this topic? Well, you know, um, recently, primatologists have studied uh, chimps and, and their response to death, and they've dis discovered that they respond to death in a way that indicates they understand that members of their community have died, and they actually have a, a death response that seems to indicate that they actually are mourning uh, the loss of those individuals. So, for example, uh, mothers who have infants that die will continue to carry those infants around mm. with them after they've died. They'll carry the corpse around, and they'll swat away flies, they'll groom hmm. uh, the okay. corpse, uh, and it can be several days, even uh, several weeks, that they'll carry around this corpse before uh, they actually let it go. So this ha kind of has a connotation where we mourn our dead. If, an if animals are mourning their dead, the distinction between humans and animals may not be as great as what we think. That's, that's right. Yeah, that's okay. right. And, and for adults, there's even a, a much more pervasive response to the death, uh, to the death of adults I among chimpanzees, where they will... Uh, in some instances, strike the body apparently out of frustration or trying to revive the body. Mm -hmm. They'll stand a, a vigil over over the body. They'll they'll sniff it. They'll uh, there's like a it seems like a, a, a mourning process that's mm -hmm. underway. They'll sometimes they'll groom it. They'll keep flies away, and then when the body's disposed, a lot of times they'll revere that site hmm. that becomes almost like this this special site that they either will return to it and visit or sometimes they'll avoid the site as well. So there seems to be, again, this very real emotional response to death uh, in chimpanzees that many people see as kind of like the antecedent mm. uh, to our death responses as human beings. So as I'm listening to your language there, there's, you know, they revere, they, they fear, they're uh, mourning. Those are very human terms, and so it's kind of loaded. I'm kind of curious, what is the actual behavior that they're seeing um, is there a way to separate the behavior from the motivation, if you will? Because your mourning is one thing, you know, but if you're picking flies off, that could be, that, that's, an, that's an activity as opposed to a, right. a, a thought, if you will. Yeah, well, you know, and I mean, a lot of people who work as, uh, you know, animal behavioralists will point out that we really can't know what's going on mm -hmm. in an animal's mind. There's, there's no way you can really truly know that. We try to draw an inference based on the behaviors that we see. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it does appear as if there is uh, some kind of genuine mourning that's taking place or a recognition that there has been a significant loss, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but, you know, as, as I think as you're hinting at, there, there's a tendency that we have as human beings to anthropomorphize. Mm -hmm. We attribute human qualities to, to machines to, uh, and to animals. Mm -hmm. And the concern is, could people studying the behavior in this case of chimpanzees and their response to death really being imputing human mm -hmm. qualities to the chimps that really don't exist. So I presume in this, you know, where there was the site where the, the chimp w died, that where they revisited or where they avoided, that there was some sort of statistical significance to how often they came there. Right. And then the question is, what is the significance of that activity or the grooming that would go right. on? Um, <laughs> What, by what sort of measure would they say, okay, we're aware that something, that the chimpanzees are aware that something has happened, that this, that this other chimpanzee is dead? Yeah, well, you know, um, it, it, it's really the sum total of, of, of you know, the responses. Mm -hmm. so, so, for example, you know, uh, the, 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 the group tends to be much more, uh, you know, somber okay. and, and they, their activity is diminished. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's almost as if they recognize, again, that there's a very real loss that, that's taking place. But there, there are some animal behaviorists who say, uh, you know, that, that this response that they have to death actually uh, serves a, a critical function mm -hmm. within the chimpanzees that may really be a better explanation than the chimps are actually mourning 
the loss of the individual. So for example, the mother that continues to carry the corpse around. Well, that you could argue is essentially a behavior that would reflect a very strong nurturing mm, relationship okay. that the mother would have with the infant and that, that, that chimps who refuse to give up the corpse of the child would otherwise be very good mothers who would be so attentive mm -hmm. that it actually would improve the reproductive success. Mm -hmm. Whereas mothers that would tend to give up the chimp uh, corpse very quickly or the infant cor corpse very quickly mm -hmm. may not be sufficiently good mothers. And so kind of a byproduct mm -hmm. of this is that they end up carrying around a dead corpse that we interpret as being mourning or, right. but it may be something else. Or when so, so, so it sounds like there's some very real behavior that is going on right. that looks a lot like the way human, or at least it, mm -hmm. it connects to the way humans do things. Right. And then there's the question is, what's the explanation for that behavior? Is it kind of just propagating the species the best way, or is right. it actually the connection with humans? Right. Well, you know, and for example, with an adult, when an adult dies, depending on the stature of that adult within the group, uh, that, that death is going to force a, a restructuring mm -hmm. of the hierarchy of the group and the relationships in the group. And could this, this death response be a way in which the, the chimps are kind of coming to grips with the mm -hmm. fact that there's going to be a restructuring that takes place? Is this so, so there really the is a societal type aspect or a, a social aspect that's right. going on. Right. That whether, I mean, you know, that that's there and they're figuring out how to, do, or, you know, they've got right. to deal with that at some right. level. Right, and, it, and this is, of course, still very different than how modern humans mm -hmm. respond to death through funerary practices, where these are highly ritualistic practices mm -hmm. that are designed to honor and celebrate the person who's died, designed to comfort those people that have loss. And, and there's also a sense that this is part of the process of ushering that individual into an afterlife mm -hmm. if there's a, you know, if people are religious. And so... Right. You know, it's that's a very different response than I think what you're mm. seeing with chimps when you look at functionally what uh, what it's accomplishing within chimps versus uh, in humans. Mm -hmm. So how does this, when we look at this behavior as Christians work at RTB, how do, how do you think about this sort of behavior? Does it support our position on uh, creation evolution or is it more naturalistic, if you will? Yeah, well, I mean, again, there is a, a tendency that people have to view this as being an evolutionary antecedent to our mm -hmm. death response as modern humans. But another way to look at it is that these animals are, are soulish animals, as, as, as Hugh Ross describes in his book, Hidden Treasures in the, in the Book of Job, that, that they're, they're soulish animals, they're the nefesh animals mm -hmm. that have soul-like properties, mm -hmm. which means they're intelligent, they have an emotional capability, so they very well could be responding to this death as, as loss, but it also, again, has certain functionality within, mm -hmm. within the species. So I would see this as being, again, part of God's design that reflects the nature of these creatures and also has a, a very important function in the social structure and the reproductive fitness of the, of the group. Whereas, again, I, I see a very sharp distinction between the, the funerary practices in modern humans and, and chimps, where we really are showing evidence for symbolic uh, behavior in, in the way we practice uh, you know, our response to death. Well, thanks, Fuzz. I yeah. appreciate your comments. You know, when we look at life here on Earth, one thing that's indisputable is that all life dies. Humans die and animals die. And the question is, do the way we respond to death show that animals are like humans or are humans and animals exceptional? And what I love about what Fuzz has brought to us today is that he shows that the way animals behave actually reflect the way scripture describes these remarkable animals. And it shows that that's very different than the way humans do things. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Fuzz's two-part article on this. Chimpanzees respond to death like humans. It gives you some great resources to help you use this remarkable discovery about how humans and animals deal with death and show that Christianity really is true.